happy Sunday. Um, hi, Laura. Oh, thank you, Paula. I'm looking forward to it too. It's, um, I, I was super pleased with it. So my mom sent me a bunch of pictures of irises in her yard. Um, and she said, you need to paint an iris. And I said, oh, I'm already working on one. Well, she sent me pictures of an orange iris. I don't know if y'all have ever seen an orange iris. Gorgeous. Um, but they're not real common. So, <laughs> so I stuck with one that's a little more traditional and colors that I like. So hi, Judith. Okay. And someone did ask me if I ship to Canada. I sure do. Um, ship just about every week, several packages to Canada. In fact, the mail lady said to me the last two times, she goes, you must really be popular in Canada. <laughs> and I said, I don't know, popular is the word, but you know, they need product and I have it. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this around because I have a lot to share with you guys. So let's come right down here and I'll get this out of the way. Okay, so this is the piece we're doing today and absolutely love these new surfaces from cdwood.com. So it comes in two parts and I'll share a little bit about that with you in a second. I'm going to move that out of the way. Um, I did finally from last uh, Monday, the 10th, for my Facebook Live, the e-packet is available now on my website. Um, it took me a while to get it on, but it is on there and um, available. So let me move that out of the way. So I got some new items in. I want to show you real quick um, some new Stampenda stamps love these wispy branches and then also another slimline stamp that has uh, wood grain so aren't those fun so those are on my website now as well and then let me show you the other surfaces that i got from cdwood.com if you're not familiar with them um, it's covered distributing right there cdwood.com they have surfaces packets paint um, scrapbooking stuff because Chris owns a scrapbook paper crafting store um, that has paint and stencils and you name it. So fantastic quality, great. I cannot wait to paint on this. In fact, I almost painted the iris on here, but I have plans for this one that might even end up going this way. So, and then another little surface with a little frame. And again, that's what, you know, the oval that I got with the separate frame. Okay, so again, those are on cdwood.com. Okay, so when you get a package in the mail that has this kind of tissue paper, I'm sure you guys can guess who it's from, right? <laughs> so, Tracy Moreau, I finally got my stencil order in. So, stencils that have been out of stock for a while are now back in stock got a couple new ones look at that oh so new stencils some back in stock those are loaded on my um my website now and let me look i just saw a question patty may this is a nine and a half um frame so i will put in the description i will put the number um, I did in my post that I did yesterday saying I was going to come on live, the um, SKU, the item number is in there. Okay, so love the tissue paper. And then she has these new bags. Not sure that they're on her website yet, but they come with, you know, an eraser and craft stuff. So fun. Thank you, Trace. And then, oh, so a little journal that I can write in. Very nice. A wee gift for journaling. Too cute. Thank you, Tracy. And the other thing I got, which I'm super excited about, let me get it because I pulled, I pulled two of them out so I could show you guys. So um, all orders that go out, you'll have one of these two little stamps. Uh, stamps, hello. One of these two little stencils. So does little thank you stencils. And so I finally got those in so I can give those out with orders. And my table is full of orders right now. So I'll make sure to add those to 
to the current orders. And then I also got these, um, the checkered board finally. So the half inch, the quarter, and the eighth. So again, loaded all those on my website this morning after the FedEx guy came and dropped those off. Last week, um, when I did my lemon, I had a, a drawing for, um, there were two stamps, Stampenda stamps, the grunge script stamp, and then the mum. And the winner of those is Sue Cray. So Sue, I think I have your information, but private message me your mailing address and I'll get those mailed to you tomorrow. All right. And then I had the um, three-piece stencil brush set. The Stencil Pro by Dynasty, the one, the five-eighths, and the three-quarter, and the winner of that is Letitia. So if you will, again, send me your mailing address on private messenger. Don't put it in the comments. I will get those mailed to you. And then, what is your website? My website is right there, sandymcteardesigns.com. Okay, yes, a wonderful package of goodies. Yes, hi, Glenna. Okay, so some giveaways for this week. I have, let me find, I'm missing one. Oh, right there. I have three giveaways. So the first is um, a set of three stencils. So it's M square is a stencil line I have with Tracy Moreau. So that's maple leaves, snowflakes, and a bunny with a wreath. So one winner, the way you enter is comment, like, and share this live with your friends. Um, if you share it to a group, make sure it's allowed. I don't want anyone to get in trouble. Um, the next giveaway is a stamp set of mine. So it has the written instructions, a stencil, the rubber stamp that I drew, and it also has a surface. Okay, so that'll be drawn for a second winner. Hi, guys. Hi, Virginia. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Linda. Hi, Vicki. Okay, and then the third giveaway, my friends at Dynasty Brush. Absolutely my go-to brushes. A half inch, a three-eighths, and a quarter angle shader. Okay, so again, comment, like, and share. If you don't follow me on YouTube, Follow me on YouTube, and if you do, let me know, and uh, you'll be entered again. Okay, let's talk about this piece. So this piece, again, came in two pieces. I knew that I wanted to, um, I was actually thinking black, and I painted it black at first, and I thought, no, I really want it to go gray. So I painted it with a 50-50 mix of black and white. Made this really pretty gray color. All right, and then, and I'll show it to you on the back here. <clears throat> so then I stenciled this French script. And I did a couple steps already just to save time, but did the um, stenciling with this old French script from DecoArt. And all this information, again, is in the e-packet as well. Um, on this side, what I did was I painted my favorite stencil, which I'm out of stock on still, um, and I did this flourish. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that because I want you to see how I move it around. And so what I, what I wanted, I didn't want it to be too bright like my lemon where the frame had the white that was very bright. Um, how do you keep the stencil in place on a curved edge? Mar Margina, I'm gonna show you. So it can get a little tricky. So let me find my brush and I'm gonna get a little bit of painter's tape. Okay, which is key. And using an intricate stencil like this can be a little tricky. So what I wanna do is like on that end, I want those straight ends to go off. Okay, so that I don't have a, a straight line. And then I'm gonna take my tape, tape it in place. All right, so 
what I wanted to do on my um, original was take the background color, which was again black and white, mix that together. And that right there is my background color, okay? But I wanted the frame to be on the lighter side, so I picked up some more white, mixed that in, wipe it off really nicely on a paper towel. I mean, look how much paint I've wiped off. You might think, oh, you've taken all the paint off. You're not going to have anything left. I wanted this just to be very soft and ghost-like, very, very faint. So soft circular motion, counterclockwise, change often directions to clockwise. So see, Margine, how that stencil doesn't move? It helps to use that tape and keep it in place. Okay. So then you have that, all right? Now, I can continue to go around and move this. And again, because I have such little paint, that's not gonna hurt it, putting that tape on top. Again, very light pressure to get that soft look. If you can't tape it to your piece, tape it to your surface like on my, um, my silicone mat here, or whatever your desktop is, that will help keep it in place and not move around. But see how easy that is and it just flows. And it doesn't matter if it doesn't line up with where it left off because this is round. Hello, it's not going to. So, um, and if I have any place that overlaps, that's okay too. So what I did after, let me just go ahead and finish this so I can give you the, rest of what I did to this frame. And I finally got the e-packet up on my website <laughs> late yesterday afternoon. Um, it's just been a crazy week. I don't know about y'all, but mine was crazy. Crazy busy, but that's a good thing. Okay. So again, now if you finish that and you're like, uh, it's a little, you know, too bright still, you can take a little bit, once it's completely dry, take a little bit of glazing medium. Um, what I'm using today is the fast drying glaze medium. I've had this for about three years. Tracy Moreau turned me on to it about three years ago at a convention. I got some. I used it a little. I use it all the time now. <laughs> it's amazing. Okay, but you can take some of this with a little bit of black and go over it, and that will tone down that design if you have it too bright. But what I did, and I'll show you on this side, which is a little bit lighter, um, I came around the inside edge with my angle brush because I wanted to kind of frame that in. So I'm gonna turn that over, and let me come in just a little so that you can see. There we go. And I'm not gonna do all the way around, but I am gonna show you how I did it. All right, so half inch angle shader, again by Dynasty, the toe and the heel. I'm just gonna dip that brush just a little bit of that chisel edge right into the um, medium, work that into my brush. I'm gonna pick up a little black on the toe. And I'm just gonna work that in. Turn it over, work that in. Okay, now with the toe facing the inside of the surface, I'm just gonna float that color around. Now, it's not showing up as much on this because I painted this black um, just to kind of finish it off. But on the other side where it's gray, you can definitely see it and you can see it right there too. See how it tones down that edge? Now, I didn't do it on the outside edge, I just did it on the inside edge because I thought that kind of framed the piece nicely. And then I thought, well, maybe just a little. <laughs> so I did come back with just a very light float so that it hit the edge here, and this is a little bit wider. So again, just felt it finished that frame off. So I'm gonna move this to the side and let's get our piece. <clears throat> now, the other thing, like on my lemon piece that I did, I, um, I painted on the back of it. Well, I didn't want to um, paint on the back of this one, to be honest with you. So what I did was 
I had this oval that is almost exactly the same size, laid my pattern, transferred it on after I did the background exactly the way I did my original, and I'm gonna paint it on this piece. Um, again, just because I didn't wanna ruin, I didn't wanna ruin the back of this one. Um, so, which I love. And I appreciate all the sweet comments and all the e-packets that you guys got for this piece and others. Um, it certainly helps me be able to do what I do, and um, which is what I love to do, and that's paint and share it with y'all. So, um, hi, Letitia, you won a giveaway. So, I'm, I'm sure you could go back and watch it, but let me just show you what you won. You won that from the last, uh, the last live I had, okay? So, I have your mailing information, I believe, but you can message me and I'll get it to you. Okay, so after I transferred my line drawing on, I painted in the petals with white. I did two coats. Um, the little area here that's brown, painted that in white as well. And then the leaves, I did paint white to begin with, and then I came back and just base coated them in with plantation pine and lamp black. I would say to um, two parts to one. You want it to be a nice dark green, but not black, all right? If you don't have this combination, you can always use black forest green or any green color for that matter. And then my little bee, I just went around him with a liner brush and filled in some areas where it's gonna be yellow, outlined his wings. I could have done his legs, but I just left those for now. All right, so we're gonna concentrate on getting this iris done first. And so let me zoom in so that we can get all the details. Hi, Doris. I totally agree, uh, Julia. I love how that float makes it look 3D. Okay, so I'm gonna pull my chair up even though I don't like to sit <laughs> when I paint. Um, <clears throat> and I'm going to take my 3 8 angle um, shader first and just get that wet, dry it off. I'm going to dip into a little bit of the medium, which I have right here. And I'm going to come over and pick up um, some of that black. And let's get it just on the toe, okay? So let me show you here. I'm going to pick it up just on the toe of the brush and work that in. Thank you so much, Marsha. So good to see you on. Okay, so I picked up, oops, get a little bit of medium on the toe. And what I'm gonna do first is just give myself a little bit of shading right up underneath these petals. A lot of times I'll do this right after I do the line drawing, you know, put the line drawing on and um, I don't know, I just, I like the way it kind of sets it apart from the background to begin with. If it gets on the paint, quite all right. Okay. And then just, and this is just a little bit of black with that medium. If you don't have the medium, you can use a little bit of water Okay, so I'm gonna, oops, get a little bit more. I have to remember it's dry in my studio because of these studio lights. So I'm just gonna take it right down that leaf. Again, black on the toe of the angle brush. I'm just kind of float in that color. So you use the fast drying medium to float your shadows. Um, either that penny or water, yes. Okay, so I agree, Donna, it does make it stand out. And so it does help. I'm not gonna do the shadows on my B. I'm gonna show you those a little bit differently. And I'm not gonna do my shadow on this piece right here. I'm gonna show you that differently, okay? And then I'm gonna come right in here. And just float that right down that stem. Okay, now <clears throat> let's talk about our iris. I need to flip my palette here so I can show you my colors. We'll move that that way. Okay, so I'm using um, Doxine Purple. 
I'm gonna shake that up. And primary blue. Okay, these colors oh, are so beautiful together. Um, I love using this color combination for my hydrangeas as well. And then just some white. Okay, and I need, let's see here, a little bit of, oh, I think we'll wait on the yellows. We'll wait on the yellows for right now. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a number 10 flat. So this is just a 10 shader, 10 flat. Get it a little wet, dry it off. Now this is, I wanna show you, I'm not mixing it down to one color. I'm only um, picking up the colors on my brush, purple, primary blue, back to purple. When I go to my piece, if I feel like it's too blue, I just adjust by picking up more purple and vice versa. Um, I like to brush mix that way because I think you get really cool colors. Um, I'm gonna zoom in a little more. Some really cool colors. They're not cookie cutter down to, you know, one mix of those two together. Um, sometimes you see more purple, sometimes you see more blue and I love painting that way. Okay, so I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna fill in this little area right in here. I probably could have used a smaller brush, but when I come back with the white, I definitely will. Okay, so this space on my finished one, you'll see, is just kind of, it's just color. Okay, there's not a lot going on there. Um, there's another petal in the back. You can see the top of that third petal there. So I really don't have a lot going on in that um, background. So a little purple, little blue. Now I'm gonna pick up those colors on a smaller brush and pick up a little bit of white. And I am just gonna kind of tap that in, just like that. And lift that up just a little because there's a little bit of a glare on it. And I'm just gonna come in with that white and I'm just going to dance that brush around and I'll add probably a little bit more to that later when we get done with everything. But it's just, it's the color, it's movement, it's, um, it's nothing exact. I'm gonna clean up a little bit around that petal there. Okay, and right now I'm feeling like it's a little on the dark side, but again, I'll leave it. And when we come back um, and do the petals, I'll readdress it. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do, let me get my original up here so I can, whoops, not get paint on it. <laughs> um, okay, these are standards and these are falls. When you're looking at an iris, the petals that go up are the standard petals. The ones that come down are considered falls. So of course they're falling away. Um, I like this combination of those lighter, whiter petals on top, and it's very little that you have to do to these. So I am gonna take that brush and just give it one more little coat of white. And I'm, I just have this, what is this? This is a four. Um, and since it's in my hand, I'm just gonna go ahead and use it. And just a nice thin little layer of white paint. All right, so I thought I could sit, but I can't, <laughs> I have to stand. Okay, so this little petal right here in the back, let's tackle that one first. And um, hi, Sue Cray, you won one of my giveaways from last week. So I will, um, I, I just put it over onto the side, but if you'll send me your mailing address, I'll get that off in the mail to you tomorrow. So I'm using a quarter inch angle shader. I have a little bit of that blue and a little bit of that purple on the toe of that brush. And I'm going to float it right in at the base of this back petal, okay? 
I just swiped it across a paper towel. I didn't want to get too much. In fact, I'm going to pick up the tiniest touch of that glazing medium so that it will move. And again, it's just coloration. It's not a lot. Okay, so see how I just kind of moved that around? Now, on our petals, I want you to notice the, the little lines that are coming in here to kind of give it more of a ruffly look. You have these that go out and come in and dip, and go out and dip, out and dip. These, I'm calling the valley, okay? These are your peaks. So on your peaks, that's where we're gonna put a little bit of this shading color. And you can use an angle brush, you can use a flat. I'm gonna show you both ways. Um, and if you painted my orange poppies with me recently, we dry brush these on. Love that look as well. So I'll pick up a little bit of that glazing medium. Again, a little purple, a little blue. I'm gonna pick that up on the toe only, work that in. I'm not looking at the comments right now because I do want to um, get through this. Of course, I've got a lot of details. Um, and I will go back and answer any questions if I miss them, okay? So what I wanna do now is right from the um, middle of that bottom of that petal, I'm going to pull that color up right there. And I knew I was gonna do that. <laughs> So wipe it off. I knew I was gonna not make it curved enough because the way I was holding that brush. So kind of curve that up. And then I'm gonna pull out little lines. Now don't worry, that's a little on the thick side, but when we bring this white back in, it will cover that up, okay? Some of it up. And then I know I wanna do the same thing on here, so I'm gonna slide on my chisel edge bring that up just kind of mush that out of the way okay and then again some little lines coming up from there so a little bit more of the medium again if you don't have medium you can use water a little purple a little blue just kind of get that mixture and right along this side where it flips I'm gonna add a little bit of that shading right in here. Okay, and I don't want it to look outlined. So if you get too much of an outline, you can come in and just soften that edge. Make it go right around there, all right? And then you don't wanna see where you start. So make sure you soften that out. Okay. Hi, Sheila. Hi, Marilyn. Okay, so let me show you first with the angle brush and how to float in these colors um, on the peaks. So again, a little bit of that Josanya fast drying glazing medium, little purple, little blue. I tend to do purple blue and then come back in and pick up a little bit more purple because that primary blue is such a strong color. I'm gonna swipe it across my paper towel because I don't want a lot of color, okay? Work that in, work that in, swipe it across your paper towel. So on these peaks, you can do a very little float, loose float, not a little float, a little loose float and kind of bring that color in and you wanna follow the shape of that petal, okay? So that's with the angle shader. For this small of a petal, I feel like it's still a little on the big side. Um, so I'm gonna show you what I did with my number four. And what you want it to do is you want it to taper off in size. So it's going to be a little bit wider at the top and it's going to be uh, tapering down. So think of it like a tornado, okay? And again, a little up here. Oops, a little on the dark side. So just touch it with your finger. A little too much paint, need a little bit more medium. 
There we go. We want it to be a little bit more like that, faint. Okay, and then we'll come in here. All right, so notice the difference. That's how faint you want them. Those are a little bit on the darker side. I can take care of that. Okay, so on this side, let me show you using the flat brush. So this is a four um, flat shader. Rinse that out, dry it off, pick up some medium. This time, it doesn't matter if it's on the corner or if it's on the whole brush. Okay, so I have a little bit of that purple, a little bit of that blue, and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing, but this time I'm gonna use the corner of the brush, might have taken too much off, and pull down, okay? So a little bit of that corner, and pull down. So you can see why <laughs> I like this one a little bit better. I, I feel like I can control it a little bit more and where it's going, just using that corner, a little bit wider here and down. And again, the key is going with the flow of the petal. You don't want to just go straight across because that petal is curled and cupped. So we wanna make sure we get those strokes in there that show that this, um, this petal has that movement. Okay. Oops, a little too straight there. And then on here, we do want to put in a little bit. Okay, so easy peasy, I think, once you kind of know the flow and movement of that petal. Now what I'm gonna do is wash this out. Hi, Nancy, no problem. Love the way you make the pink so light. Thank you, Karen. Yes, and that medium is perfect for it. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take that same number four and I'm gonna load it up with white. And I'm gonna come right back over here and I'm just going to touch right in here and pull, okay? Now, let me back up. I washed my brush out. I know that I did not wash my brush out when I did the original. And I can tell because uh, looking at it, I see that coloration from my brush. So a lot of times I don't wash my brush out. I'll just wipe it off on a paper towel. That's exactly what I did. Then picked up a little bit of white because what happens when you pull that through, there we go, you get a little bit of that coloring. So a little bit of that blue, a little bit of that purple. And again, just on that corner and I'm pulling with the corner, with the flow and movement of that petal. And then right on here, I do want to make sure I get in and give that a nice little curve right there. Now, on these that I said, you know, a little bit on the brighter, darker side that I don't want, I just picked up a little bit of white, a little bit of that medium, and I can soften that out. Okay, super soft. Thank you, Lapita. Hi, Chris, no problem. Every, every layer makes it come alive. Don't, I, I totally agree, Karen. All right, and there are some things I'm gonna add to that that will make it come even more alive, but let's go ahead and, so I just wanna dress my brush again with that purple and that blue. I'm gonna wipe it off on my paper towel I know I want to pick up just a touch of medium and some white. Okay, and then again on here, I'm going to pull from that valley. So right in that valley, I'm gonna pull, oops, it looks like I have black on my brush. Let's turn my paper towel over, which is where it would have come from. I'm just gonna soften that out. Okay. Now over here, we don't wanna to add too much brightness because of course we have that shadow right there. So I'm just gonna kinda of skim it, very lightly skim it with that brush. Okay. 
And I love, love, love when you get that very uneven edge on those ruffly petals. Okay, just like that. Now in here, it got a little bit uh, muddy. I'm just gonna clean that up with a little bit of that purple and blue. Just picked up the tiniest touch. Remember, I pulled that one too straight before. And again, if you do that, what happens is it throws the, the shape of the petal off, um, and then it will kind of throw you off. So if something seems like, oh, you know, something's not right, it might be the direction and the way that you're pulling that stroke. Put a little bit of that color back in. All right. So that pretty much, with the exception of a little bit of white, is our um, is our top petals, those standards. I am gonna pick up a little bit of white on this front one, and I wanna make this very pronounced. And I'll pull a little bit of the white, leaving that gray kind of purpley blue color showing. And then I'll tone that down just a little. Okay, so again, those are pretty much our back petals, our back petals, <laughs> our um, top petals actually, but our standard petals. And now I'm just gonna use a liner brush. Um, I need to put a flag on the end of my rigger brush because I misplace it all the time. So I just grabbed this liner brush and I'm gonna pick up some of that medium, work it into the brush, Get some white, work that in. Make it nice and inky, okay? Thank you, Faye. I hope you had a wonderful birthday. All right, so now I wanna just kinda loosely outline these. Nothing too exact. I'll start with that back one, just kind of loosely outline these. If you go outside the lines, great. Definitely here. And again, this just kind of adds a little bit of that softness. Dresses those up just a little bit. Give it a little bit more of a wiggle if you didn't get a wiggle the first time. And that is our finished ones. Now, I'm going to let this dry uh, because I do want to come back in. I'm going to deepen some of these and do a little bit of shading um, at the base. So see this really pretty shading here at the base. Um, so I'm going to hit my heat tool onto that. You guys completely cleaned me out. I got a shipment in. They were gone the same day. I have another shipment on the way, hopefully soon difference between a rigger and a liner brush. So, Sheila Vesper, a rigger brush comes to a flat, um, let me see if I have it in here. Oh, I found it. Okay, I found my zero rigger. I'll show you. Okay, so a rigger brush, you can get to a flat, brush, okay? Like a liner though, you can also make it round, get to a nice little point. A liner brush is made in such a way that you don't really get a flat edge. You get that, all the bristles kind of come up to form that nice tip. And so my go-to, um, I like the zero and the two, and there's another one, it might be the four that's a little bit on the longer side. I'm very used to using a long script liner um, for my one stroke days. You know, I, I love a good, nice, thin liner. Um, but the riggers, the faux squirrel line, love how much liquid they hold and how it flows right off the brush. Okay, so that's the difference. Hopefully that description makes sense. The medium also takes it longer to dry, doesn't it? It does. It's kind of an oxymoron too, Sheila, because, you know, it says it's 
um, a fast drying glaze medium. So you would think that maybe your paint would dry a little bit faster, but it doesn't. And, and I like that about it because you know I like to paint wet on wet. So what I want to do is I want to come back in and deepen some of these uh, just a little bit. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of medium, little purple, little blue. Again, get that mix. See how I like it. I'll wipe that off. I'm going to come over here and get this medium on it. And the tiniest, like ever so tiny touch of black. Okay, again, I'm going to swipe it across my paper towel just to get some of that coloring off. And then on these areas, I'll come in and deepen some of them. Um, and technically, should have done that before I did the outlining. But, you know, hey, quite all right. All right, so you can definitely see the difference where I have darkened that just a little bit. That black kind of makes it a little bit more purpley gray, um, and I do love that on my finished one. Okay, we're gonna get out a little bit of asphaltum. Let me show that again in case you missed it. <laughs> asphaltum. And my quarter inch angle. Having trouble getting the rigor brushes and the Joe Sonia Fast Glaze here in Ontario. Would you know where I might be able to get these products? So, Brenda, I know that you will you should be able to hopefully get the rigors at um, TracyMoreau.net. She's in Canada. Um, if she does not have them, I know she will have them probably soon. The other is um, for the glazing medium. I know someone wrote um, on her live the other day where you could get that. And for the life of me, I cannot think of the name of it. Um, something arts. I will find out and put it in the um, respond to your comment, Brenda, and let you know exactly where you can get it. There were a couple places I thought that someone said you could. Okay. So now what I want to do is I'm going to come in with, again, that um, quarter inch angle. Can I use extender as medium? You sure can, Pilar. Yes, just a little. The key really is the tiniest, tiniest amount. And someone asked what the difference is between this glazing medium and let's say another brand's medium. Um, I like Traditions glazing medium. Um, I do find the Americana just a touch on the tacky side, a little sticky, but use it. And, um, but this is my favorite. And again, thanks to Tracy Moreau for hooking me on it three years ago. And then I just, it took me forever to use it. Okay, so I have a little bit of Doxine Purple with that medium. You could even use a little blending gel, you know, something to thin the paint out and not lose the integrity of how the paint is made. Hofcraft has it. What do you say you use glazing medium for? Uh, Donna, to make my colors a little bit thinner, to help them move. Um, I used it on the petals up in here. I have it on my angle brush right now. I'm going to take that Doxine Purple right at the base of my petal here. Let me get on camera there for you. Right at the base of my petal. And then I am just going to kind of, if I bring that up in a couple places here, that's fine too. And I'm just going to soften it with my finger. So this is just Doxine Purple, a little bit of medium in my brush. If you don't have the medium, you can use water. Let's clean that up a little. Definitely don't want any kind of a line. A little bit more right at the base of this one. It's a little tight, so I'm just gonna kind of shimmy that in. 
bring it up. Got it on that front pedal. Okay, now what's gonna help this little float of color? I'll set that down. Pinecraft has it, adding the purple just brought it to life. I agree, Robin, and I think what's gonna bring it to more life, let's zoom in so I don't have to hold it because then I end up going off camera, um, is that Doxine purple. I almost said magenta because you can see how pink it looks. So dry that. Now I'm going to come back, a little medium on my brush, a little bit of asphaltum. And again, I have just a little bit on that toe. Kind of thin that out by walking it over to the right. And then I'm going to go right over that Doxine purple. Okay, soften that with my finger. And I just, I don't know, I love how rich that um, asphaltum makes that doxine purple look. Try and stay out of that flip. Okay. And I am going to take some of that very thinned, just doxine purple, like I put in at the base. I am going to bring that in a couple places up in here. I kind of just washed it around and then touched it with my finger just to bring some of that coloring up. Like that. Okay. And if you get some on that front little flip. You can always come back and clean it up. Okay, now let's get my liner brush back out because you can see when I put that float in on this little area here, I do want to accentuate that. So again, that loose little outline Just accentuate that little flip right there. That little flip right there. You can get the pattern on my website, Debbie, right there at Sandy McTeer Designs com. Okay, so let me lift this up for just a second want to okay I thought I got into that black paint all right let me zoom out actually we'll just move it right up we'll go on to these three right here okay so exactly the same way but these are purple and that blue mixture so we're gonna go ahead and base coat those in and I'll go ahead and use my um, I'm going to use a number six and show you how I pulled this color on. You're very welcome. Let me get rid of that right there. Okay, so we're going to paint these in with that mixture of purple and blue. So again, I'll just pick up some purple, pick up some blue, pick up some purple, and we're going to go. Now I know that my petal, let's go right up to there. Okay, so I'm just taking the corner and I'm kind of following around the edge of that petal. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna pull these up straight. So almost to follow the shape of that petal. And again, what I love is you see some blue, you see some purple, and then you see a mixture of it. So again, purple, blue, little bit of purple. And I do have a little piece of this um, petal from the other side that you see. So I'm just going to leave it white for right now. Again, 
kind of pull those up. Okay. Now I can paint the blue iris in my garden that I sent you. Oh, good, Debbie. Wonderful. Okay, so again, I don't know if you can see it as well. They're a little tilted up, you can. Um, you can see some of the blue, you can see some of the purple. It's not mixed down to one color. Again, I love that. I'm gonna go ahead and do all three petals. And because I don't want to get any kind of a line, again, my studio is quite dry, I am gonna go ahead and start pulling that up. Again, following the shape of that petal. Turn that. There we go. So I can get into that. Just little dips. Try not to make my, my flower too big and go outside those lines. So I'll pick just a little up, see if it'll help move it a little bit better. There we go. Okay, again, putting it on, pulling it up, following the shape. And when you do that, when you're base coating, it kind of already gets your hand in that motion of pulling those strokes to finish the petals. So good idea, instead of just, you know, painting it in haphazardly, already start to kind of follow the shape and movement of that petal as you're pulling and base coating. Okay, again, if you feel like you get too much blue, you can pick up more purple. And when I was designing this and laying it out, I, you know, I, I didn't have any stenciling in the back. I wasn't sure if I wanted anything. Um, and so I did it on black to begin with and then thought, hmm, it needs to be different. Changed it to gray, added that stenciling in. And then I had one on my line drawing, I kind of sketched it out. I had two leaves and I just painted one. I painted this one here. And my mother, who absolutely loves irises, I sent her a picture of it, and she said it needs another leaf, and I'm like, no, it doesn't. <laughs> but I knew she was right, and I said, I know, I drew it out on my um, sketch, and I knew I should have just added it in. And it balanced it out, I think, perfectly. So again, I just have a little bit of that paint on that's a little more purple. I'm gonna add it, because I thought that one looked a little blue. All right, so same thing with this one. This one looks a little on that blue side. Pick up a little more purple. And they are, they are that um, purpley blue. And I was surprised how well this primary blue um, looks like purple and matches beautifully, I think, with the dioxine purple. All right, a little bit on the transparent side, but when we start coming in and adding those um, peaks and valley strokes, you will, you'll cover up more of it. Oh, too much blue. Okay, and on the ends, if you have a little white, quite all right because we're gonna pull those strokes from the edge. All right, let me pull that down so you can see it. And I am gonna hit this with my heat tool. Thank you guys. Uh, Letitia, the, the, um, I base coated everything white first, the flower, the stem, the leaves, um, and a little bit of the bee. Um, I feel like I got too much brown on that flower right there. <laughs> and if y'all saw me on the, um, well, on any of my lives, sometimes if it's, if it's bothering me, I have to take care of it right then. So, sorry, but I'm gonna take care of 
that little bit of doxine purple. Take down that brown. Okay. Now, on my finished one, I want you to notice, let's get that in there. Okay. So this little flip right here, see how I got blue on it? Of course, we want that to go over it, but I'm putting my beard and everything in, so there's no reason to mess with that now and try and take care of that until we're all done. All righty. So what I'm going to do now is come back with my number four shader, and I'm going to pick up a little bit of the purple, a little bit of the blue, again, just on the same brush, little purple, little blue, and I'm going to pick up the tiniest touch of black. Okay, so on these, that little dip, that's where our brighter color is going to be. So on this part where it goes out, we're calling those the peaks. You're going to pull a little stroke. Now, let's do that again because this one right here goes up to there. Okay, so again, a little purple, little blue, tiny touch of black. That black's just gonna deepen it a little, but I don't have much, okay? And then I have a little bit right here, a little there. And again, it's a little wider here, and it tapers off as it goes up. Following the shape of that petal is key. If you pull them in the wrong direction, it will totally throw off the shape of your petal. Okay, so a little purple, little blue, little black. Hopefully you guys are seeing that on camera. It's just darker than what I base coated my uh, flowers in. Again, that black darkened it just enough. And I'm gonna leave that little sliver for right now so I don't lose it. Again, wider. I'm gonna tape that up right there. Okay. So now let's go ahead and do all of them. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up purple, blue, a little bit of black, mix that in. And on this one, for some reason, every time I paint an iris, I tend to start in the middle instead of starting up here. I find like if I can get those middle strokes in, I can get the shape on the sides a little bit easier. So I'm gonna flip this around. And I know that right in here, I have this one a little bit wider and it's coming right up. Thinner, thinner, thinner. Oops, hello. Let's get on the camera there, Sandy. <laughs> okay, so again, right at that loop, the peak is the part that goes out. And I'm gonna turn it to the corner. Okay, this one I have curved. I have these curved. Okay. Thank you so much, Paula. So do I. All right. So I know I have that little dip there. Just want to make sure I get these going in the right direction. Again, little purple, little blue, little bit of black. Pull and let it taper when it gets near the tip of that petal. So let me turn that around so you can see it. 
<laughs> Give you a little whiplash. So it's gonna look a little stripey, right, at first. It's gonna look a little stripey. Now this one has a little bit of a different action. It's kind of cupped up a little bit more and it's very deep kind of in here. So see how intense that shading is? Again, when I, once I come back and put in my lights, um, and pull those lighter strokes. Again, it's that playing game of, you know, maybe putting in too much and then taking it out with putting in more shading. So um, I try not to stress myself out that it has to be, you know, right at one time, all of it's done. You can layer, which is my favorite way to paint, um, and adjust as you need. So again, purple, blue, a little bit of black. And this one, I'm going to turn it and pull so that this one comes right back and over. Pull from there, pull from there. And then this one, we'll just pull right back, which will kind of help accentuate that little flip that we have there. And then I know I have one there and there, okay? A little hard to see on that um, petal, as dark as it is, until we come back with our brights, which we're gonna do now. Okay, so I'm gonna leave um, the purple and blue in my brush, but I wanna take out that black. So I just wiped off my brush, picked up some purple blue. I'm gonna take my paper towel, swipe it. I'm gonna pick up some white. I see that I have too much blue in my brush, so I need a little bit more purple. So I have a little purple, little blue, white. Swipe that across my paper towel. And this is gonna, I know, take me a couple times to get the initial color on and then come back with the brighter color. So I wanna take care of this one right here. This is that, that um, petal, that bright color that goes right from here, right up to there. Okay, so little on the, let's get that right there. Little on the blue side still. So, okay, and I will show you how to take care of that. Again, when it's too blue, come back, pick up a little bit of purple. You can fix that up. All right, so I'm pick up a little white, have that purple and blue in my brush. Pick up a little bit more of that. Okay, so right in here, I know I'm gonna have one right here. And right there. Now, look what I just did pulled them this way instead of that way. They're going in the wrong direction, which is gonna to totally throw that petal off. So I'm gonna pick that up. Add a little bit more purple in there. Yes. See how blue that petal is? I didn't realize that until I just picked up purple only. A little bit of white. I'll come back in and do that one. And where I have a flat edge because my brush, don't worry about that. We're going to take care of that. And then these, I need to go back a little bit with them. A little purple, a little blue. There we go. Okay. Because when we come back in and we accentuate that white around the edge, it's going to help give that ruffled, lifted look to that stroke, okay? So, pick up purple, blue, white. I'm swipe my paper towel, pick up a little bit of white, and probably should swipe it a little bit more than like I did there. Pull that up. 
Okay. Don't worry about these. Like I said, it's gonna look stripey till we come in and do a little wash of color on that. I think you're getting the idea that just that that's gonna all come together. Okay, now that I have that in, I wanna go ahead and take care of this right here. And again, that's just a little bit of the purple, a little bit of the blue. And I'm just going to oops, have white in my brush. I'm just gonna go ahead and get some coloring on that. Okay. So now I'm gonna come back again with the purple and the blue. Remember I said how you can come back in these little areas that we first did and go over them like we did on the top ones. Add a little bit more of that color in. And it definitely needed more purple because that was all blue right there. And then I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the medium, little purple, little blue, and I'm gonna tone this one down just a little. See how just that little wash completely helped tone that down. Okay. Now, Let's take our liner brush. I'm going to get the purple, the blue, a little bit of white. Touch of medium. Again, I'm not mixing it down to one color. I have all those colors on there. And I want to, I know that I have a little bit of a flip here. So I'm going to start up here and I'm going to just do a little bit of a kind of a wiggle in and out okay and then just kind of soften that I'm going to pick up a little bit more medium little white and again just kind of loosely outline this petal okay if you get it too much and you don't like how outlined it is, you can soften it out. And right here on the, uh, my finished one I'm looking at, I am gonna pick up a little medium, little blue, little purple. And right in from here, I'm just going to bring some of that color down, right in there. bit of white Let's accentuate that just a little more there we go now on this side because this is those two right there are going around the other side of that petal I am going to bring a little bit darker right in here so that that one kind of breaks that in, you know, not in half, but it, it shows that that goes around the other side. Okay. Thank you, guys. All right. Let's go ahead and take care of this one. So I'm going to rinse out my brush, wipe it off, dry it off really, really well. Again, we'll pick up some of the purple, some of the blue, a little bit of white. I'm gonna swipe it across my paper towel. And let's start on this one right here. So I know that I have my little 
um, raised point right here. So I can pull back. Right to there. Okay. Now I didn't have a lot of paint on my brush that time. And then again, let's bring that down and up. And again, I'm just going to kind of soften it with my fingers. Remember, it's going to look kind of stripey till we get some washes of color in over it. It's amazing what a little swipe with your finger will do, right? Okay. And then we'll just do a little bit right there. Again, I feel like I'm getting on that blue side, so I'm gonna pick up a little more purple. Again, kind of taper that out. Wider at the edge of the petal. Taper it out as you go towards that center. I'm gonna turn this. Make sure we're on camera. <laughs> Okay, um, and again, like I showed you in the beginning, you can use that um, angle brush and kind of float in the color if you want to. I just, after doing both ways, felt like this worked better for me. I liked the look of it when I was completely done, you know, putting on those layers. So, but definitely several ways to do it. And many different artists that probably have many different ways to do it as well. It's just the way I like to do it. Okay, now these, I do want to make sure I go with the curve of that petal. It's a little outlined there. A little skin there. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, thank you, Betty. I wish I could see how you load your brush. You say, yep, let me show you right here, Julie. I want to be zoomed in super close so you guys can see the action, but I totally understand the palette thing. So when I come in and I pick up a little bit of color, little purple, little blue, little purple, Kind of mix that a little, pick up some white, mix that, see how it's too blue. Come back, pick up a little bit of purple. Okay, then I take my paper towel and I just skim the surface of my paper towel to get that excess paint off. I find it easier to layer color on um, slowly than to try and get a whole bunch of heavy paint off. So hopefully that helped. So I am going to pick up a little blue, a little purple, um, and I'm going to come right back in here. I know I did a little black before, but this will help tone down that blue, make it not so blue. Get a little bit of that purple in there. Okay. Remember how it had a little bit of that purple right over that um, highlight area, especially if it's too blue. So I just have a little medium and a little purple, and I'm gonna go right over those highlighted areas to soften and tone them down just a little bit. Then a little purple, a little blue, and again, right. In between those highlighted areas, you can put some of that darker color. And again, that playing game with color. If you do it the first go around, you're just like, ugh. You know, that's why I'm showing you all these different ways that you can come back in and, and introduce and bring more of that purple in if you have too much blue. Um, because... I certainly do that as I'm painting. A lot of times I don't necessarily remember that I do it. 
Um, I try to be really wordy in my packets <laughs> and give you guys more information than not enough. But um, it's just those little tweaks here and there. This, this painting part of it's pretty straightforward. It's all the little things to, you know, help bring some of that other color back. You know, a little bit of that purple. Okay. Let's come down just a little. So you have a little bit of that glare from the... Um, from the medium. So I am going to pick up now again just a tiny touch purple, blue, and white. And let's see if I can do this without turning it. And I'll just highlight a couple of these. Sorry, I have to turn it again. I'm just gonna try not to, but find it easier to pull this than to push it. Okay, so let's move on to that third one. Thank you, Brenda. I try. <laughs> um, again, you know, it's one thing when, when I'm sitting here at home painting up something, and again, because I use my fingers and I um, just go back and change colors and everything, I really tr try to remember all of that. Um, because again, if you are at home painting it and you want to know how to fix something um, and you don't, that's usually when we get frustrated. I, at least I know it is I get frustrated um, and just like, yeah, I'm going to move on to something else because, um, you know, I don't know how to fix it. Um, so put it away, set it aside, come back to it. But again, giving you all those options of how you can add those colors back in, soften those looks. So on this one, let me I'm gonna turn my original around so I don't go the wrong direction. Um, I'm gonna pick up a little purple, a little blue, a little white. Um, and let me tell you too, Julie, when you asked about loading my brush, I would say 80% of the time I pick up too much blue. So it's a good idea, again, to test it on your palette, see what the color looks like before you go to your piece. Okay, so I know that I have, and, and this is another thing, if it helps you, you can always come in with your, um, your liner brush and you can give yourself, you know, that little outline, because I know that I have that little dip right there. And so I'm gonna have that color go from here and up. And again, on that blue side. There we go. A little bit there. Pull that one back. Have that little dip right here. I'm gonna pull that back. Have a little one right there, although this is gonna be darker. We wanna make that a little bit darker like we did on the other petal. Um, I know that here I have a little divot. Very little paint on my brush. So I'm almost dry brushing it on. It's There's very little paint. Um, don't have any medium because I don't want these to be too pronounced. Okay, I do want to pick up a little bit of that purple. Come back in. 
Oops, a little on the white side. Get a little bit of, bit of that purple back in there. Okay. So, I'm gonna come back with some of that purple. Just a tiny touch of blue this time, <laughs> since I can't seem to get that blue going. Um, it wants to take over my purple. And I'm gonna pull it back in a couple of these spots. Definitely here, definitely there. And then right back here, remember I want to keep that not as bright because that part right here goes up and back. Like that. Okay. Tone that one down. So again, just a little bit of that purple, a little bit of that blue on any area that's a little too bright. I'm loving this. These are a little more muted. So again, I'm going to come back with just a little touch of medium, a little touch of white. I'm gonna swipe that across my paper towel. Again, very little paint. Can brighten some of these up just ever so softly. Swipe it with your finger. Okay, see how that just, uh, it just looks like that petal is rolling. And I'm gonna brighten it over on this side. Again, a little bit of that medium, very little white. Pull it up a little, swipe it with your finger. If this is your first time joining me, <laughs> these are these are your best blenders so don't be afraid to use your fingers to soften out color sometimes it does exactly what you need it to do okay let's go ahead and get a little bit on this one a little bit on that one Just like that. Okay, so what I want to do now on that petal is I, just like I do on this um, petal over here, I do have an edge. I'm going to show you how to do that with a flat brush. I showed you before, starting dark and going light shows how much we need that background to give depth to the final color. Absolutely, Karen. And what's funny is I, um, I've always tended to paint dark to light. I have found myself lately, um, especially in my art journal, painting light to dark, um, but I switch it up. So, okay, I'm gonna pick up a little purple, a little blue, go back to that purple so that I'm not so blue. Pick up a little white, I'm gonna show you my brush. Okay, so a little purple, a little white, a little blue, and I'm going to slide on the chisel edge of this brush, I'm gonna go up and down and give it a little bit of a wave, okay? So over here, remember I did it with the liner brush. There, with the flat of the brush, just on the chisel edge of the brush, okay? And again, you can come back in and pull right from that edge to kind of soften. If you need to soften out that flip just a little bit, if you need to brighten it up in a couple areas, you can add a little bit of white to it. Okay, so let's leave those alone for right now. 
again, even after doing the beards, I can come back in and fix all that up. Um, brighter, darker, whatever I need to do. But I'm gonna flip this around so that I can see this petal right here because what I want you to notice on um, this flower that I was looking at had these tiny little slivers of white and while pretty, I thought they were a little distracting, so I didn't make them as bright. They're just a little on the muted side. But I did that with my quarter inch angle. Let's see, I only have 20 brushes in my water basin. Okay, so I have my quarter inch angle shader. I'm gonna pick up a tiny touch of medium, just on the toe pick up a little bit of white. I'm gonna work that in on the whole brush. I'll show you my brush. Okay, so I don't have a lot of paint. I'm gonna swipe it across my paper towel just to get the excess off. And right in here, I'm just going to tap. Okay, so I'm just gonna tap on the chisel edge. I'm not pushing hard. I'm just tapping and kind of going back and forth, back and forth so that they'll be uneven, not exact. They're gonna look a little bit brighter and wetter because I have that medium on my brush. I do want it to come down just a little. And I have my little beard that's gonna go right in there. I just felt like that added enough of those lines. Too bright, all you have to do is touch it. Okay, that medium has it wet, so it's going to soften it if you touch it. Okay, so I have it on that petal there. Flip that around. And I do want it to come right up to about here on that side so that you can see it. And I'm just gonna go ahead and do it right up to that edge because I want it to be shown underneath my beard in any place if you can see it, all right? And then I also have a little bit of it right here on this petal. Again, didn't reload, has a little bit of white, touch of medium. Gonna give a little bit of texture to that petal, just like that. And I can't see enough of this one, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. But I do want to accentuate that flip even more right here. Even though I said I was done with it. Okay, yeah. And I don't think it's that bright on my original, but I feel like it needs it right there because of that coloring. Okay, let's do our beards. Those are going to be asphaltum, saffron yellow, and bright yellow. So, on the, um, on the beard, Brenda, I did, um, like what we're about to do with the yellows, I did use the liner brush, but you could definitely use the, um, the angle brush as well. Such a great tool, has such a fantastic chisel edge. Um, but I am gonna go ahead and use this Zero Rigger, since I found it in my, <laughs> my brush bin over here. And I'm gonna pick up, so I have a little bit of water in my brush, I'm gonna pick up some asphaltum. And I know this one comes off the um, petal just a little bit, like right in here. Okay, and I'm gonna bring it right into there. So I'm touching and pulling, touching and pulling, just tiny little strokes, touching and pulling. Right there. This is asphaltum only. I know that I have it here, so I'm just gonna kind of tap in where the base of that beard's gonna be. And it, it's very helpful if you come out to where you know you want it to go, because if you start here and you go here, you might get a little too long. 
So kind of start there and give yourself that placement. And I'm just pulling little dashes of color. Okay. Now over here, you can barely see the, the beard. Just a little bit in here. I'm going to go ahead and put that brown in just right at the base of that petal. Okay, then rinse out my brush. Oops, got here late. Love iris flowers, purple are my favorite. Hi, Janie. So funny thing is I'm not that big of a uh, purple person, but I love purple flowers, purple hydrangeas, purple iris. Um, I am gonna pick up while those are drying, a little bit of that purple, little blue, little white. On this rigor brush, make it inky. Okay, and so how we kind of loosely outlined that petal, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same for this one. And again, way too much blue. So you can kind of accentuate very loosely, not doing anything exact. Accentuate those little loops that go up. Okay, kind of pull that back if you don't wanna. And then on this one, I just did it right to here. I didn't do that side because that petal continues to go over but I did do here. And again, you can kind of re-outline that if you need to. Okay. And I noticed what I did right here. Too funny. I took that back pedal and I made my pedal right to it. So I'm going to separate that. and then bring that right above, because it goes right there. Okay. Now, back to the beards. So I have the asphaltum on. Now I'm gonna pick up a little asphaltum and a little bit of saffron. Again, just gonna layer these colors. Again, now I'm gonna be a little bit more precise in my pull. So a little asphaltum, a little saffron, and I'm gonna start at the tip there and just pull back, whoop, a little too much saffron, pull back tiny little strokes for this beard. Trying not to cover up all that brown. Okay, I'll do the same thing here. You know, pulling from the left, pulling from the right, pulling straight on top to give that nice, full, very kind of furry beard look on an iris. And then a few little strokes over here. And this pretty much is where I left this one off. I didn't want to highlight this one over here um, because you, you can't really see much of it. So I left that one like it is. Then I'm gonna come in with some bright yellow and white. Thank you, Robin. So a little bright yellow and white, and I'm just going to highlight by pulling tiny little strokes. On that beard, and then again on this one. Now, when you look at, um, when I paint flowers, I like to look up reference photos of the centers and, um, you know, especially if they have stamens or pistons or whatever. And on the iris, what I did, I'm finding it hard to push that back, so I'm gonna turn it so I can pull it, um, is I looked at these beards and how furry they were, but also their coloring. And it looked, many of them looked, and I didn't realize there's so many varieties of irises as well. Um, but it looked like it had that white, and then 
um, on the ends, it had a little bit more saffron. So I'm gonna wipe my brush off, pick up just saffron. Oops, don't pull that much. And I just wanna kinda come back in, not covering up my other layers or my highlight, but I do wanna come back in with just the saffron, very little on your brush, and kinda tip those um, little white strokes that you just put on that yellow. Okay, let's pull that down. There we go. I feel like it needs a little wispy, little wispy one right there. All right. So let's leave that for now and let's move on to our, um, this little guy right down here, kind of that husk brown husky look where the flowers come out of it's all twisted up in it so i'm using asphaltum black um, and a little bit of green actually super simple super quick to paint this thank you so much paula okay so um a little bit of plantation pine again my go-to green if you don't have that any dark green will work Get a little plantation pine. Let me move, I'm gonna move this to the side, not that far, <laughs> and see if I can come in um, with my palette just a little bit closer to show you, probably not, so I'm just gonna um, load it up on, on camera so you can see. Okay, a little bit of asphaltum, little touch of green. Okay, now this has two little parts, but I'm gonna paint it right now um, the same color and then we'll separate it. So, little asphaltum, a little bit of plantation pine. I'm just gonna kind of let that go right into the stem. Okay, very kind of haphazard, nothing pretty. We'll come back with a little bit of um, asphaltum, tiny touch of green. Oops, still wet. Let me dry that. Okay, just touch it, make sure it's not too hot. Okay, so I know I'm gonna get into that petal. I'm gonna give it another little swipe of um, plantation pine, asphaltum, okay? Now with those colors in my brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white. So I picked up a little bit of white on my brush. I'm just gonna flatten that to mix it in. Swipe it across my paper towel because I don't want too much. And I know that these are going to split kind of right here. Okay, so you can just kind of draw that in with the chisel edge of the brush. And then I'm just going to do small little strokes to give this very rustic, husk looking type color. Okay, super simple I think. When we add some shading in there, it will help it all come together. so much Mary I appreciate that okay so again a little bit of that um, asphaltum green a little bit of white I'm gonna just kind of tap that in make it a little bit brighter make this front one brighter than that back one so again very little paint see I don't have hardly any paint get too much of that bright and just come back with the asphaltum and a little bit of green. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that and come back and shade that at the very end because if I try and do it right now, I'm just gonna keep getting into it. So let's take care of our stem and our leaves and I'm gonna zoom out just a bit so that you can see 
fully our stem and our leaves. Well, I guess I need to come out a little bit more. Okay. Now, y'all, these leaves, so simple. Um, this stem, so simple. So I'm going to um, load up my brush. I still have the number six for my stem. I'm gonna pick up some green, plantation pine, and a tiny touch of black. Uh, well, let's get that off there. A little bit of black, plantation pine. Okay, and for grins, let's just add some um, asphaltum. Okay, so from my little husky area there, I'm gonna come in, you can use the corner, you can use the chisel edge. I just don't want that, um, I don't want my stem to get too big. Okay, so I'm just pulling it so I can stay within that shape. I'm gonna wipe off my brush. I'm gonna pick up green, yellow. So green, yellow, and a little bit of white. Mix that. Remember, I didn't, wipe, I didn't wash out my brush, so I still might have a little black, still might have a little brown, quite all right. Swipe it across my paper towel, and now I'm just going to swipe the brush right down that stem, trying not to go over it too many times. You see how that just highlighted that? Okay. So, that, that easy, that simple, but I wanna bump that color up. So I'm gonna dry that. And of course there's shading involved in that when we come back at the end. So little green, little yellow, this time a touch more white. And I kinda want a candy apple green color. And then I'm gonna come to my paper towel going to swipe off the excess. You could also use a mezzaluna brush, um, you know, any dry brush, brush that you like. But again, I just used the number six. And I want to try and get that highlight a little more in that center area. And then I'm going to swipe it. Okay, that's a little bright. So I'll take some plantation pine and help tone that down. There we go. And then the magic color is turquoise blue. So I have a little turquoise blue, put the tiniest touch on my brush, work it in, swipe it off on my paper towel, and that turquoisey color, oh, I don't know if you can see that, but love that turquoise color. Jean, I haven't seen it cut out at all. Sorry about that. It might be, I don't know. My, mine hasn't cut out at all um, on my screen here, and I have Facebook up just over to the side. So, okay, so right at the top here, I'm going to put a little bit of that green, tiny touch of black on my brush, just a little bit. And I'm gonna to touch right up underneath here. Just give a little bit of a shadow. And then right here from that, there's like a little band and we'll put a little shadow there onto that little husky area. Okay, not sure if you're seeing that. It's fine here, but I do hate it when that happens. I know Robin, It believe me, I totally get it. Um, it's extremely frustrating for me because, of course, I want to give you guys, you know, two fun hours of painting and not have all those interruptions. Okay, so I'm going to take my rigger. I'm going to pick up that green, that yellow, and that white, mix it to a nice candy apple green color. And there's this little band. There was on this iris anyway. There's like this little band of bright color that was separating those two with some shading on both sides. So I just have that candy apple green color. Let me get a little bit of 
moisture in that brush to get it off. And it's very textured. Okay, just take that down just a notch. Again, it's too bright, you can take it down with some of the plantation pine. Oh, that's a good idea. Julia said if she has problems, she just goes back, you know, goes out and comes back in. Um, like I said, I've said <laughs> every time I've had an issue with it, I really do think it is um, Facebook overload. So many people are on, um, not only for pleasure anymore, but also for work and keeping up with loved ones and family members. So, okay. So let's leave that. My stem is a little on the garish bright side, so we're gonna tone that down. I'm gonna use the quarter inch angle with a little bit of um, asphaltum. And I'm just gonna float that down. That stem, look how that just, uh, just tones down. I love that asphaltum over that bright color. And then I'm gonna flip it I guess I'm over on that side. Okay. Now, like I said, the leaves could not be more simple. They are just like I did the stem, where we're going to pull that color on. So I have um, my green touch of black. I'm gonna slide from the tip. I'm using a number 10 flat, just to cover that in. Getting right from that edge. Try not to go outside the shape of the leaf. Okay. Now, with that wet, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a little green, a little yellow, a little white, that same mixture we did on the stem. Let me bring this over. Little green, little white, little yellow. Mix it together to that nice candy apple green color. Now, this is the trick, like I've shown you. Swipe it off. And sometimes I'll come back to my paper towel and get paint, okay? But I don't want all that heavy paint on my brush. So I'm gonna start from the tip, I'm gonna slide, and I'm gonna pull. Slide and pull. Because these are kind of very variegated um, leaves. Love uh, tulip, iris, daffodil leaves. Okay, so I'm dry brushing that color right on. Got a little heavy handed there. Okay. Now, I'm going to dry that. Thanks, Linda. Hi, Pat. Let's go ahead and dry that. And come back with a little bit of that um, plantation pine where I got it a little bit too bright. Take some of that down. I'm going to take my 3 8 angle, touch of black, touch of green, on the toe of the brush only, and I'm going to slide this little vein in right in the center. Okay, just give it a little bit of separation there. Now, the trickiest part on this is that, um, that flip, but let's get a little bit of that turquoise blue on there first. So again, I have the kind of candy apple green color, added a little bit of that turquoise, and I'm just gonna add it to that left side. And then maybe a little on that right side. And just swipe it with my finger. Okay. So this flip, 
You can use a flat brush, you can use an angle brush. I'm gonna use a flat brush. Um, load up my brush with green. Show you here, green. On one corner, I'm gonna pick up a touch of black. That's way too much black. Okay, so green and a touch of black. You get too much, just move to another space. On this corner, I'm gonna pick up a little yellow and a little white. So I have plantation pine on the whole brush. I have black on one corner, yellow and white on the other. So I have four colors on my brush. The only color that's on the whole brush is plantation pine. Okay. Now I'm gonna start on the chisel edge of the brush. Hopefully I have enough paint. Let me pick up just the tiniest touch of that glazing medium. I'm gonna slide and come into that leaf. So notice how it starts at the top, slides and comes down. It's going to be bright and garish at first. I'll come back and bring in some of that asphaltum on it so that it tones it down. But starting at the tip of the leaf, I'm gonna slide back and it probably is not gonna look like my original because I just tend to go with the flow of the leaf. So I'm gonna slide back, come here, go out just a little bit, and then I'm gonna come in with the corner of that brush, in and back out to the edge. Okay, so it kind of lost it there. Let me pick up a little bit more of that yellow and that white. So again, right here. In, and I'm bringing the toe that has the light color is going onto the leaf. The color that is dark is staying right along the edge of the leaf. Okay, so you get that nice little flip. Now what's gonna help that is when we come back, like I said, and you can add a little bit of shading in here to make this darker. It'll make that flip stand out a little bit more. See how that just made that flip stand out even more? Can you do a close-up of the leaf? Absolutely. Let me come right in. The problem is, uh, Karen, it's a little too long, so I can't get super close, but hopefully that gives you um, a better look. Okay, I still feel like this is on the too bright side for me. Um, so a little bit of plantation pine, a little bit of asphaltum will help tone that down. Okay, and then also on these flips, we'll add a little bit of shading in using an angle brush, little brown, so a little asphaltum, tiniest touch of black. And right on the inside here, I'll float, try and keep my hand out of the way, I'll float some of that brown right in those little areas there and then just kind of soften that into the leaf. Okay, and then on this flip, I did come back with a little bit of that asphaltum and here and there, just kind of, oops, my finger's wet, just kind of touched it here and there so that it wasn't so bright. However, I think mine's not bright enough. So let's do that again. I'm gonna use an angle brush. There we go, I like that brightness. Okay, much brighter, right? <laughs> so you can see it. Okay, let's leave that one. Let's move on to this one. This one also has a flip. Again, number 10, green, touch of black. I'm painting that entire leaf. And again, like I mentioned at the very beginning, this um, this leaf just happened. At, you know, after I finished the whole design, painted it, um, mom suggested another leaf. I 
didn't want to, but I knew it needed it. So I painted another leaf. My B, I had already painted it. So it, my B was not going anywhere. So when you do the design, if you want to lower your B, you can always bring your B down just a little bit. Um, I didn't mind that it was that close. On this one, I brought it down just a tad because different size. All right, green, yellow, and white. Green, yellow, and white. Mix that, swipe it across your paper towel. And I'm gonna start at the tip and I'm gonna pull back. Dry brush that color on. Okay. So I'm going to come back a little bit more at that tip. Don't want it solid. A little too much paint on my brush. Get in that bright. Okay, I'm going to pick up a little bit of um, asphaltum. Bring a little bit of that asphaltum on. Okay, and then like I did on the other one, little on the bright side to begin with, so a little bit of the um, plantation pine. will help tone that down, but let's get some of that dried. There we go. I love it when it stutters, when I get too patchy and too heavy handed in an area. It's easy just to go back with your original colors, bring that back to the color that you'd like it. Okay, so the flip on this one, I'm gonna use the angle brush, plantation pine on the hull brush. Let me show you loading this one because I used a flat before. So plantation pine on the heel, so that shorter part of the brush, I'm gonna get a little black. Just a little. On the toe, a little yellow and a little white. So again, four colors. Got that green on the whole brush, black on the heel, yellow and white on the toe. And I'm gonna start, do this so I can get my hand out of the way. I'm gonna start at the tip. Oh, my hand's not gonna be out of the way, is it? Let me see if I can hold it up. Okay, hold it up, and then I'm just going to do a slight little wiggle, slight little wiggle, and then right along that edge. Okay, a little bit of that glazing medium would have helped um, keep that a little bit smoother, but all I need to do is come back over it. I just flattened my brush onto my paint, get that little flip, okay? And again, on the other side of it, if you wanna add a little bit of darkness, a little bit of black, a little bit of asphaltum, you can let it dry, um, ideally we will, but I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on. On the other side, that asphaltum, And I, I'm not bothered by that at all. I'm like in the shading underneath that. I can still see some of the dark, see some of the light. But the um, when the color's the same from the tip all the way down, I like to switch it up a little with, um, again, a little bit of asphalt. Um, just kind of brush that here and there. Again, just gives it more of that natural leaf look. like that. Okay. Oh, so let's move on. Can't wait to get the pattern. Looked hard, but thanks. You break it down. Oh, thank you, Sherry. <laughs> <laughs> we 
Well, that's the great thing about it being recorded. Charlene, you're so welcome. All right. Um, and yes, Bev, you can watch the replay. It's going to be here, and it's also going to be on my YouTube channel. Okay. Now let's zoom in and let's get this B. Okay, he's pretty straightforward. We have, let's get that there, um, a little bit of black and saffron yellow to start. So on the areas that I painted in white, get saffron yellow first. And I'm just using my zero rigger and I'm just gonna tap that in place. Okay, again, this is saffron yellow. And just tap it, we want that texture. Okay, I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Pick up um, black. Not too much. Okay, and I'm just gonna tap that in right at his head. Right in those little sections in between that saffron yellow. And again, notice how I'm not painting it out. I'm tapping it in place because I want it to mimic those tiny little hairs on the bee and not uh, very smooth strokes putting it in. Again, saffron yellow, a little bit of black. We got our B in there. Okay, I'm gonna use that same brush, pick up a little bit of that medium, a little black, and I'm gonna do his tiny little legs. Okay, and I did his antenna before, but let's go ahead and intensify those just a little. Okay, let's hit this with the heat tool. We're almost done. We'll finish our bee, some shadows, and call it finished. Thank you guys so much for being here and for watching. Okay, so now on the saffron yellow, I wanna take a little bit of uh, bright yellow and white. A little too much and I'm just going to tap that on not covering up all the saffron again bright yellow and white just kind of tap that on Um, so, Diane, my e-packets come through um, email. So, when you order on my website, um, I get the notification, and then I shoot you off an email with the packets. All right, let's get to our number six. I also offer um, printed packets. They're not available on my website to purchase, but if you want one that's an e-packet, you'd rather have it printed, all you have to do is email me. Um, on that contact on my website and let me know. Okay, so now I'm gonna take uh, number six, flat. Um, gonna get a little bit of that medium, work that into my brush. Thank you so much, Doris. Okay, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white. So I have a little bit of that glazing medium and white on my brush. And I'm going to paint in those wings. So I want them a little on the transparent side. Um, they do have some color to them, but that medium will help it not be so solid. I'm getting kind of come up on the corner, use the chisel edge.
like that. Okay, so let's let those dry. I'll come back with my um, rigger brush and I am going to do some little highlights and I'm gonna start in the yellow and just work my way down. Add maybe just a little bit on the legs. I don't like to, I don't like to highlight those too much, but just to let, let you see that they're there. Okay, I'm gonna rinse that out. Um, let's go ahead and dry this because I do want to shade him, and then we'll put in the lines. Thank you, Sheila. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Linda. Hi, Sandra Schmidt. So glad you popped in. All right, so I'll get a little bit of the, um, the glazing medium, tiny touch of black. Work that in. You can always use a pen for this, um, but I just have a little bit of that inky black, and I'm just going to start at the tip and paint little lines for his wings, okay? So, nothing you really need a pattern for. I'm gonna turn this so I can pull the liner brush towards me. Okay, we got him outlined. Rinse that brush, pick up some white, a little bit of water in my brush or medium. And I do want to uh, loosely go around and make these stand out just a little bit more. Okay, and got his wings on. Let's dry him. I want to add just a touch so I have my quarter inch angle with a little bit of saffron on the toe only and I want to do the edges of his yellow. I just want to do those a little bit more of that saffron. You can even take the tiniest touch, tiny, like very little of that asphaltum. underneath those wings and just on that side. Okay, see that my toe's on this side and then I flipped it so the toe's on that side. All right, let's zoom out just a little. Okay, so I'm gonna go to my number four. Now you can use Payne's Gray in the media line. This is my go-to shading color for a lot of things. However, it's hard to come by. So you can use DecoArt's uh, Americana Payne's Gray, or if all else fails, you can just use Lamp Black, all right? But I love the transparency of these media paints. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of that medium, very tiny touch of paint. And what I wanna do is, Right up underneath the wing, I'm just going to lay in a little color. This is a little shadow. So I have a little one there and a little there. A little for his body. Okay. Not, do not think that's really showing up for you guys on camera. I see it, but let's hold that up. Nope. You're not seeing that at all. All right. Let's go to, I'm gonna use black instead of that Payne's Gray. It's funny how sometimes it does not show up, even though I feel like I have a lot of paint there. Okay, we'll do that again. So I have a little bit of black paint right up underneath the wing. I just made it very dark. It's not that dark. Let me show you on my original. It's subtle. 
See that subtle little shading right there? A little under that wing. Okay, you can do a little with his legs. You can use a liner brush for that. I'm just gonna use the corner of the brush. There's a little antennas. Just to get a tiny little shadow. Okay, gonna do the same thing for this leaf right here. So I'm gonna come right up underneath it. I'm gonna have inky paint, very little paint. Just float that right up underneath. Okay, so when that softens, there we go, a little bit of a glare there, huh? Um, you can do it with the flat brush or the angle brush, completely up to you. A little bit of that shadow on, okay? So, have a little bit of a harsh line there from the medium. So let's just soften it a little. Okay, and then let's back out just a little. I am gonna take care of that very strong line there and come back up to our flower and to our bee and to our stem and leaves right there. So not too far off from my original, right? And then again with that frame on top, um, that I have put somewhere special <laughs> so it doesn't get ruined. Um, I think that just finishes it off beautifully. And again, some E6000 right up underneath that frame um, to hold it in place. And it doesn't have any kind of a picture hanger or anything on the back. It doesn't have a hole to hang it. But I figured um, setting it in an easel would be really, really pretty. Thank you guys, thank you so much for being here. I know, isn't the bee adorable? I think he's so cute. So, and super easy to paint, like you saw. Okay, I think the thing, the whole project actually is easier than it looks to paint. It's just breaking it down into those, um, you know, into those steps. <laughs> um, and again, one of the reasons I love the Facebook Lives um, and the fact that it's recorded so you guys could go back and watch it. So again, thank you guys so very much for being here, for watching. So glad we didn't have the technical issues that we've had in the past. Um, my next live is gonna be on the 23rd. My goal is to have it on my YouTube channel. Um, I've not done a live on my uh, YouTube channel yet. I'm going to test it out this coming week and um, see if I'll give it a go. But I'll definitely post here and let you guys know um, where I'm going to be. I'm going to look at the comments in just a second, see if anybody has any questions I can see last. Um, but I will go back and answer all of those for you guys. So, oh, just lots of thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Hello. I don't think I go a project without having... Uh, paint on my arm or <laughs> my hands. So thank you guys so much. This is my first video to watch. Oh, Krista, well, welcome. Thank you so very much for being here. Um, like I said, this one's easy. I was a little worried because there are lots of little pieces and parts you have to do to kind of bring it back from too dark, too light. Um, but hopefully you guys learned something. And again, I just greatly appreciate y'all being here. And you can get the e-packet on my website if you want to um, paint it. Again, the surface is a chrishoycdwood.com. Um, I will come back and put that in the, um, in the subject line on this video where you can get it, what the item number is. So anyway, you guys have a great week. Get out those brushes, break out that paint, and do something creative this week. All right. Thank you, guys. Bye. Appreciate y'all. Bye.